All right, and today I'm joined by Ezra from 76868A and Seth from 1028A. We are have the finals of the uh, North Dakota signature event. You know, and both Ezra and Seth here were driving, so let's get started right into it. This was actually for 2,000 doubloons, the winners. So, you know, Seth won the tournament here. Ezra, so tell, tell me about how, about how, like how you guys got here as a 12th seed. That's hot. It's very, very impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a team higher up that we were hoping would pick us. Mm -hmm. However, they ended up not picking us, unfortunately. Um, so we kind of started like scrambling. We were hoping that yeah. another higher seed team yeah. above us would pick us. Mm -hmm. And then a local team from our state picked us, but uh, unfortunately we didn't pair very well with their robot. Yeah, so you picked so your sister team? That. Oh, it was not our sister team that picked us. I'm saying like you, was, you, uh, you picked them though, right? We did pick our sister team, correct. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that helped you in the in the tournament? I think you guys have a lot Absolutely. Of, yeah, you guys had very good very good coordination in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so totally. that's good. Mm -hmm. I personally I think Seth is one of the best drivers, period, right now. No way, bro. That's crazy glitch. Crazy glitch. Nah, but yeah, you guys unfortunately tie the auto here. Seth, can you tell me about you know, about, about like how you decided to play out this match? Because you guys ended up winning the, the first finals match. Right. right, right. So, like, our strategy with Pika Pika, amazing alliance partner, by the way. Like, probably the most fun alliance that we've had in, like, all of our time and, you know, competing as 1028A. Um, our strategy was to just secure that fifth goal as soon as possible. So, um, you can see they were going for some wall stakes here, but throughout the rest of quals, uh, we were just filling up that first goal on one cycle as fast as possible and then switching people out. But um, it looks they did get like a little bit carried away with the wall stakes early on in this match, but we lost that fifth goal. Yeah. I yeah. Here, so but, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. The fifth goal was actually a huge part of our strategy during Elims. Um, if you notice in our match against uh, ten twenty eight, uh, or sorry, ten ten and Makapaka, um, that's when that's the only time we didn't use our strategy of the third goal. We wouldn't fully fill all our original goals we would go straight for the third goal actually yeah get the top and lane great control absolutely yeah and we would have one teammate defend positive corner and the other goal while the other strategy for the third goal because neither of us had goal rush autos yeah which was unfortunate but yeah i wanted to point out uh, a great play here from uh 10 28 of course i'm dropping their goal there you know, to try to uh like make that like make uh push that red go into the negative corner there and just holding that and then the perfect counter as well with the arm. Yeah. Yeah. That arm. So in semifinals, actually, we were size checked and it was slightly out of the 36 expansion limit. So we had to take the claw off that did uh, the wall stakes. <laughs> so you guys had no so, wall stakes, but just but just a flipper? Yeah. Yeah. We literally just had a flipper. And that's so funny. That's, yeah, that's, that's all funny. we used it for basically throughout the entire tournament, anyways. Mm -hmm. um like seth said the other day that he saw a couple calls where we would just use it to um like it's so nice to just make it so that teams can't use your own goals against you or to take out a positive corner like we did it against pika pika in one of the finals matches as well yeah i definitely see so much flipping of like goals here in the finals right even with your uh teammate here pika pika on the blue alliance try flipping that that red goal over and trying to you know get that negative play corner play at the last second but unfortunately i think that goal is on a on a ring so and then you flip yeah. back, you flip it back over just to you know, uh, just to like put that into the grave, right? That's not that's not gonna happen, you say. So you guys, amazing yeah. place there. A yep. huge issue for us was during endgame, we knew we lost because neither of us have hang, and both of them do, mm -hmm. along with their wall stick mix actually working and us yeah. not having one. Yeah, but yeah, they have uh, so many more wall sticks there at the end. Exactly, like we don't have a single ring on wall sticks, which is very very bad. Right, but hey, I definitely think those plays with flipping the goals and stuff is going to be huge later on, right? Because we we do see quite a lot of like teams not being like, not willing to drop their goal, and when they drop it, right, it's very easy to be stolen. And this is such a good way to just make sure that even if you drop your goal, right, you can do other stuff, and that goal is because like you can see when someone's about to go flip your goal, unflip your goal, and then you can go and you know counter that, right? Absolutely, it's so easy to counter unflipping your goal. Oh, this is the the match two here. Yeah, as you notice, our autons are not tuned at all. Um, neither are our teammates. There's a reason we're twelfth seed. 
Um, but but you guys get the tournament. We, you guys win. Yeah, but we lost most of our autons actually throughout all of Elums. Really? So how did you guys actually like you know make that up, comeback? Because you know teams have been saying like you know auto is the most important thing of of high stakes period, and I, I honestly I was agreeing with them, but until like here you guys are able to you know prove me wrong. Yeah, I personally think the third goal is actually the most important thing. Definitely, definitely. Without a doubt. Having third goal over having um, auto. Yeah, I like, I, that, mm-hmm. I like to point out something else as well with the blue lines. Yeah, we I do, noticed we that, do make a violation. Uh, I mean, I do notice that they, they do a great uh, swap here towards the very start of the match, a minute 30. And they do a swap, and 1028A is going to come here and just take that take that goal away, right? And they're able to get right. a third goal. You can see this is kind of like the strategy that we were like trying to play for the entirety of Elims, and we did it pretty well in most of our matches where they just try to cycle that first, like whoever's out with the goal tries to cycle that first goal as soon as possible, um, and yeah. then whoever doesn't have it, you know, rotates out and gets that fifth goal or that third goal. My bad. Yeah, I call it the fifth goal. Yeah, this is where wall stakes is such a big advantage for blue because. <laughs> Right, is not really doing doing any wall stakes right now. But I see you flipping that goal over, right? Trying to make sure that you can maybe like go for go for a positive corner play, right? Still still a goal. Is that why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um that's the only way we think we could counteract them getting uh wall stakes is with our we call it okay. We don't really have a name for it, but it's we basically only use it to take corners. Yeah. Do you think you're, are you gonna flip, flip, try to flip this goal here? Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, so we do flip the goal, but then we actually sell by not flipping it and letting them get it out of corner. Uh, so then they can go back into corner with a full goal still. Uh, yeah, I think I think you it, you possibly could have brought that to the negative corner too if you like had the I, absolutely because it wasn't I think fully tipped. I think I think if you could have just if you if you had the chance to, you probably could have brought it even further. I think I should have held on to the goal until like 17 seconds maybe mm-hmm. and then gone for negative corner. That way they can't get positive or, and I can still get plays on negative. Yeah. That could be a 24 point change. Yeah. I thought the tournament because, was over here, but how did, how did you guys? No, win? we did. We did too. I like looked at Seth and I was like, I like did like a thumbs up or something. I forget exactly. Like we were like, we lost, but we had smiles on our faces. Yeah, we were so no. happy to in that situation like in between matches we were talking about how like grateful we were how we really didn't want to play any other team and like this was just such a great opportunity yeah, for us absolutely this is such a good finals match i didn't expect this to happen but you know i'm very happy we got to see this on stream absolutely yeah, i think this is like the most fun i've had in a finals match or like any kind of high stakes like i guess high stakes high stakes match ever is like playing against seven six eight six like this was we play them at our region all the time. They come up to Omaha to like run some local tournaments with us, and like I don't know, seeing them make it this far in the tournament from like such a low spot, getting to play them in finals, and like ultimately even losing to them. That was like the most fun I think I've had. Yeah, wait, I I think I might have accidentally skipped finals too. There, you did. I was going to say something. That is my bad. We can we'll, 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 we'll watch that afterwards. We'll watch that. It's fine. All three this is the only great. final two really. Yeah, what happened here? I think I mean blue took auto, so this is this is a great performance out of red winning this match. Definitely. Yeah. So if, as you notice, uh, yeah, I think both of, are you guys both trying to are you guys both playing that swap with both alliances about to play that swap. Yeah. Our our goal though is to have the almost full goal and to almost pressure the um, other positive corner so that if they make a mistake or they try to field. However, ten twenty eight A just fills up their goal so fast. Yeah, I feel really like work. I feel like uh, like what do you call it? Pika here placed their placed the swap a little slow, and that gives the opponents that goal, right? Because like yeah, they were, right. you know, I think they got off off track here, getting trying to get that for that wall stake, and that really gave Red the opportunity to take that third goal because, you know, I think you guys are blue is so much quicker on filling up those goals all match all through matches, but just like I think that mistake cost you guys the match. And I mean, at such a like. With, you know, $2,000 worth of award money on the line and some pretty tall, good-looking trophies. Um, even if it's a smaller signature event, there is still, like, a lot of pressure. So uh, yeah. I don't take that personally at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I noticed yeah. this, place, this play was extremely good. You were, you know, almost get that uh, that ring on. I was so surprised right here. That's so fast. But uh, that would yeah. be so cool if it went on. 
Yeah. So um, the guy in the middle on our team, actually, <laughs> yeah. the glasses pointing at the field, he was making these abnormally loud call outs. He would yell, wall stick, wall stick, wall stick, wall stick. <laughs> and it was truly like that's, I think, what got us through uh, 10 or through Elims because he would call out corner plays, switches, everything. I kind of struggle with tunnel vision when I'm driving. Yeah. But he's oh, able definitely. to see the. Um, oh, definitely. Dang. Okay. No, no, but no. He's no, able no. To see the, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, states, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's able to see um, like the whole field with such a good perspective. Like, genuinely, we would be an awful team without him as like our driving coach, I guess. Yeah, whatever. No, I have the guys, exact man. same thing. Like, I have the exact same thing. Killian and Tammy on my drive team, like, in high stakes there's so much going on as far as strategy goes whereas like in a game like spin up or maybe even uh maybe even over under it's more so just important to be able to drive the robot like super mechanically well mm -hmm. and have like strong driving mechanics in high stakes it's more important to just observe everything going on in the field and one person can't do that so comms absolutely. are super important to everybody out there give your drivers good comms yeah absolutely i mean you, yeah. if you look at this these matches here and look at the because we can we can't really see the the blue alliances uh drive team here but if you look at red alliance here they're talking almost like nonstop, and I just think that's amazing because you know, there's so much information being relayed right to your teammates. It's almost like like any other like sport really, where there's communication really matters this year, and I think that's just absolutely. So nice. Yeah, a driver can't be a good driver without a good team, truly. Like you cannot win a good match without good comms. Yeah, if you look at the drive team here, there's like four people talking simultaneously, so I think that's. You guys did a really good job there. Yeah. Right. And there were some solo teams at the tournament. And uh, you can tell that, like, I think strategy was definitely the downfall of certain solo teams where mm -hmm. they were really, like, driver, like, strong. They had strong mechanics. They had a really good robot. But, you know, there's some stuff on the field that you just can't see as one person. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think Ben 5150 would play amazing this season because, you know, he was able to keep track of the whole field by himself. He was just able to, like, look around and with one like one peak he's just like because i was talking to him right because right, right. he was kind of my, my drive drive mentor and he was mm -hmm. saying how like he was able to predict what people would do by just taking a glance at them on the field yeah so there is something i want to point out here if you look at our robot on the back of the field we're about to use something that we call the fingernail mech where it just grabs that second yeah, blue that. ring that was... out of the corner perfectly we drop it unfortunately and it takes a little longer to put it on but that's super valuable just when you're running out of rings on the field being able to get those rings out of those far stacks quickly, yeah. super good. Is that a poly piece on your intake? Yep, yep. Yeah, very, very cool. I, I love this. This is my favorite end of a match, like from the whole season. Yep, the fast wall stake at the end on both sides. And both sides. And then the pin for the hang defense both on both sides. Yeah. It is just truly phenomenal. Yeah, both yeah, yeah, both seven, six, eight, six teams getting the defense. That's crazy. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Hey, but anyways... Hey. You guys won the tournament, and you won 2K. So what are you guys going to use the, the money on? Um, So we have to pay for our own world registration and any out-of-state tournaments. So we're intending on using it to uh, do a mix of going in between or to go to more out-of-state tournaments. Oh, so I we'll see. see N28A in Omaha in December. Oh, yeah, North High Comp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, North High. That'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to both of you guys. You guys played such good such good high quality vex here and also really good sportsmanship thank from both of you guys thank you absolutely yep, yep. 